So, Ming became a member of our family 15 and a half years ago. We adopted her in early 2002, a time so long ago that Jackson was still attending primary school and we had only been living in our St Andrews house for a couple of years. The shelter didn't know exactly how old she was, but they guessed at between 6 and 12 months old. So we decided that, for the sake of clarity, we would celebrate Ming's birthday on approximately the anniversary of the day we adopted her, February 12. It was Jackson who picked her out. I didn't know why he chose her, or what thoughts were going through his mind, but she was the one he picked. We needed to give her a name. She was a unknown mixed breed cat, but we thought we could detect a bit of Siamese in her, so we decided to give her an Asian style name. But what would it be? Mum nominated China, Jackson wanted Ping, but I won the day with my suggestion of Ming. But the, by the time Ming came into our family, we had had Bob for about 12 months. You could not imagine there being two cats so completely different from each other as Bob and Ming. Bob was eight years old, was a fully grown cat. It was obvious that he had been a family cat in his younger years, because from when we first adopted him, he almost immediately became comfortable with our domestic routine and slotted in quite comfortably into our family. We obviously didn't know what had happened to Ming during the first 12 or so months of her life, but it was clear that she had had a horrible and miserable and terrifying kittenhood. She may have been abused, neglected or starved. In any case, in the months immediately after joining our family, she was utterly hostile towards all of us, especially Mum, but generally she sought to avoid all forms of human contact. She would not allow you to pat her or pick her up, and if you tried she would hiss at you and bite you in order to get away. There was a brief period of time after we'd had her for about a month, where we seriously considered her, where we seriously considered taking her back to the shelter, because her behaviour was just so bellicose and violent and harmful that it was almost impossible for us to keep her as a pet. But we persisted, even while she seemed almost incapable of love. We kept the door open with our offers of affection and kindness, hoping that it would eventually pay off. Looking back now, it seems almost certain that had we handed Ming back over to the shelter, that she wouldn't have founded, that she wouldn't have found another home to go to, and would have been put down. So the fact that Ming was able to live such a long, full life was due especially thanks to us being a particularly patient, tolerant, persistent, and enduring family. For a long period of time, Ming remained the black sheep of the family, where she essentially kept to herself, didn't communicate with anyone, showed no affection to or interest in any of us, and only ever came down to came down and only ever came near us when it was time for food, and during those times it was more like a temporary truce rather than a peaceful settlement. We still considered her to be part of the household and she was always counted in the roster of family members. But when it came to actual activities inside the house, she was completely absent. No matter how much we tried to love her and care for her, she seemed very cold and aloof. Imagine a scene at our old house in St Andrews in the middle of winter, in the lounge room area, in front of the fireplace and TV, with the carpet and two couches, there would be situated all the humans plus Bob and Gypsy as we kept warm and were watching something on the TV. Sitting at the top of the stairs, still, still able to stay warm because of the St Andrews house having be one big room and hot air rises, but who sat alone, there was quiet and reclusive Ming. 
later on, after many months of waiting, Ming did decide to come down the stairs and join us in the lounge room area of the house. But she wouldn't sit on the couch or on someone's lap, like with Bob and Gypsy, but would situate herself in that gap underneath the fireplace. It was perfect for her, because she was able to stay nice and toasty, building up all those nice warm spots across her body, without having to physically interact with anyone. It wasn't until we'd had her for about five years that she had built up enough trust in us that she could tolerate prolonged and somewhat affectionate physical contact with a human being. She was now willing to jump up on the couch and sit on someone's lap and get patted, but she would always sit upright so that it was only her four paws that made physical contact with the lap. Her body was always positioned in a way so that if the situation looked dicey, then she could immediately jump off at a moment's notice. It took yet another year before she realised that she could actually drop down and lay down on someone's leg, which was not only more relaxing and comfortable, but was better able to stay warm. The watershed moment for Ming came during the 2007 and 2008 period, which was the time when we moved houses to Diamond Creek and we lost Gypsy. This was the period of time when Ming seemed to have mellowed out, shed away most of her coldness and emotionlessness, and became much more of a normal social family cat. Maybe it was because without the cat cage system in St Andrews, and instead us leaving the, the window open, Ming could come and go whenever and wherever she pleased, giving her more control and freedom over her life. And without Gypsy around anymore, this meant that she was the only remaining this meant that she was our only remaining pet, and maybe because of this she no longer felt on permanent guard against nearby enemies. Whatever the case may be, that ten year period from 2007 to 2017, was the golden time in Ming's life. If we were to ever, if we were to ever go, if we were ever going to ask the question, what is Ming's legacy? This would be it. The fact that Ming was able to overcome her, her traumatic and painful kittenhood, become acclimatized to living in a house despite everything, to be able to overcome her fear of human beings, so to be able to become a friendly and loving companion is testimony to the power of love, friendship, patience and persistence.